Join me today at the beautiful Meadowlands Fishery on the Lambsdown Pool. What I'm going to do today is a, a spot of uh, winter feeder fishing. The water is very cold and I'm going to try and show you a few tips that will help you get more bites on these cold winter days. Ground bait choice for today is the Mainline Match Sweet Marine. Lovely kind of ground bait, high quality fish mills with a hint of sweetness which when you're fishing places like Meadowlands is perfect for when you're catching roach, skimmers and the odd carp. And what I do is, obviously, it's got a resealable bag. I've used a kilo of this before, so I've got a kilo left. I'm going to straight into the bucket. As you can see, it's got some lovely, lovely bits and bobs in. Smells absolutely beautiful. It couldn't be easier to prepare. But what I like to do is I've been mixing ground baits for many years. I like to put quite a lot of water in, mix it, then leave it. So all the bits and bobs soak up at the same time. Rather than putting a little tiny bit in at a time, this is the way I like to do my ground bait now. So some water, quite a, a good bit in there, as you can see. Get the old faithful drill. That's enough of that. And as you can see, it really, really does look overwetted. But if I leave that for 10 minutes, it will, all the particles will soak up the water and it will look pretty dry. I just want everything to soak up at the same time. And by adding more water at the start rather than the little and often approach, you'll find that you'll, the consistency will be absolutely perfect. I've left the ground bait now for about 20 minutes. And as you can see, all the goodness has soaked up all the water and what I need to do now is just give it another whiz up and that now is absolutely perfect for skimmers and roach and maybe the odd carp there's a few key things you've got to look out for in these short winter sessions. I've come down to the lake, even before I brought my tackle down, I had a look, see if I can see any fish moving. And there's a few fish topping in this area here, which is the middle of the lake, which is always a good area to start. Uh, on these big lakes, the fish seem to, seem to like to be in the middle of the lake, it's the widest part of the lake. Uh, like I say, I came down, I saw a few fish topping, and I thought this is where I needed to be. One of the essential things for these short winter sessions is to get as comfortable as possible. Sport isn't going to be brilliant, so you don't want to be spending most time looking around for everything you've got. So my setup here is a basic setup. I've got all my bait on my bait waiter, XL side table, hooks, bait, shock leaders. I've got my rig roost here with the spear rod. So everything that you can see is everything is to hand. Landing nets here, so you're not looking for anything that you need. Also as well, at the back here, I've got my back uh, tray, which can keep all my feeders in. And so everything is in within easy reach. I've had a good plumb round and I've settled for two lines. One line is about 14 or 15 meters. There's definitely a ledge. So I've plumbed up and I want to be at the bottom of the ledge. Always a, a good point with catching fish. Uh, it's a natural feature. Fish always tend to stay at the bottom of the ledge. A lot of food gets washed up and gets trapped there, so always a, a good place uh, to feed one of your lines. I've also put another line in to start at 26 metres. I've seen some fish topping out there, 
and it would be silly to ignore that so I know I'm casting two fish and then the line that I think I'm going to catch all my fish on I'm going to feed that at the start of the session and then hopefully pick up fish later on. One of the reasons why I've picked two lines to fish in winter it's very important that you don't keep plundering one line the fish will back off and you with a lake this size you don't know where they're going to be so it, in my opinion it's it's really important to have two lines use one as a resting line and try and pick fish off both of them all all day and you'll usually find that during later on in the session you'll see which one will be the most productive and usually it's the line that's closer in that is the best to start the session I put three four hole size cage feeders of ground bait with odd pinky and odd maggot not sure how the how it's going to fish because of the conditions so I don't want to put too much bait in and overcook it straight away on the short line which is where I think I'll catch most of my fish later on I have actually put quite a bit of bait in I've put three of those in quite rich with a few casters a few pinkies and a few maggots I won't feed that again until I go on it like I say that's where I think I'm going to catch most of my fish so I'm prepping an area for later on in the session uh, and then just keep casting out with a three or a four hole casting quite regular every five to six minutes 50 centimeter up length single maggot double pinker and then just see where that leads I've had a couple of bites earlier a couple of indications so there there's a few fish there so I'm just going to keep plugging away keep changing my hook baits and keep changing how I'm putting the feed through the feeder whether it be more maggots more pinkies or sometimes just loose ground bait Tackle wise for these uh, silverfish winter sessions you need nice soft rods. This one here for my 26 metre line is the 11 foot Drennan Acolyte Ultra. We're going to be fishing with quite small hooks size 18, 010 diameter hook lengths so we don't want to be breaking off. So like I said nice, nice soft through action and if you look a, a decent fish I think this one's quite a decent fish I just know that I'm not going to get any hook pulls and it's essential that you match up your rods to the terminal tackle that you've selected as you can probably see the setup of the rig is something that the England team and some of the other country have been using for a while now there's a lovely Meadowlands bream is a piece of feeder gum about six inches which comes in really handy it's a nice little shock absorber when you're using thin hook lengths 010 small hooks size 18 it just gives you a little bit more of a buffer just gives you a little bit more of a buffer in these winter sessions if you hook big fish on light tackle there it is one of the things I like to do as I'm fishing these sessions is to keep changing the consistency of my ground bait I started off with quite a dry mix bites odd bites odd indication nothing quite happening so just a bit of water for my dead maggots just into the corner of the ground bait just to dampen it up a bit so it's a little bit more uh, loose the way I'm thinking is that when I cast in there's going to be a nice trail coming behind it of heavy damp ground bait and it's paid off with two fish in the next two casts a lot of people ask me whether I prefer to hold the rod or leave it in the butt rest when the conditions are like this I do like to like the bite develop I feel I can do that a lot better by using the butt rest Personally, if I sit with a rod in hand, if the tip moves a slight bit, I'm always inclined to, to uh, pick up. The last thing you need to do 
in the winter is bump a fish or go in too early at it and miss the bite. So I'd much prefer to leave it in the butt rest and sit there and wait for the bite to develop. Then you definitely know that when you lift up, the fish is going to be on. Hook and line choice for the winter. There's only one line, one hook length material I use for, for my feeder fishing is fluorocarbon. I've been using it exclusively now for about four years and it ticks all the boxes. I like the way it presents underneath the water. It sits nice and straight, giving me every opportunity to hook the, the bites that you get. Coupled with today a size 18 9.11 T hook, which is a Teflon version of the Colt 9.11. Perfect winter combination for the silverfish fishing. One of the things that I like to do during the winter months is I actually do move the feeder. I know that some people say you should never move the feeder, but I sometimes think it induces a bite. The fish are sitting there, they're going to be very cold in the freezing cold water, and sometimes if you just move the feeder only a couple of inches, it just creates a little bit of action which might make one of the fish in, jump into action and get hold of the hook bait. Just add a couple of really small indications. I don't think there was proper bites. I'm quite convinced that the line bites. So now's the time to try the short line. So same setup, everything. Small three old 10 gram feeder. It's quite stealth fishing this. You don't want to make in, be making too much noise when it lands on the water. The fish are quite spooky, so because it's my first cast on this line, all that's going to be in there is neat ground bait, no bait in there at all. As I said earlier, I've already fed that, so I'm expecting a few fish to be sitting there waiting. So, it's a nice little gentle plop, rod right under the water, make sure the line is sunk. Same again on the butt rest. Alter that slightly. And now we're fishing. First cast on the short line. Really good positive bite. Which is nice to see. That might be a decent skimmer. Everything's welcome on these really cold days. But on my last cast, on my long line, I had a couple of bites that never, never developed and I thought there might be line bites and hopefully I've been proven right. Like I say, first cast on this short line has resulted in a nice little skimmer to get him in the net. So the next thing to do it's straight back in. You can't forget your other lines. Even if you're catching a fishy chuck, you've got to keep your other lines topped up. Not too much, just a three or four hole feeder, probably a neat ground bait. And if you stop getting bites on the line that you're fishing, you do need somewhere else to go. So the idea is you can plop in on each line and make a bite. Missed a bite that cast. Bait has definitely been done. So the next thing to do is just shorten the hook length only by about four inches, ten centimeters in new money. But I think the the fish are feeding, but they're not moving very much because how cold the water is. So, 
don't do any arm at all. To shorten the hook length down, I think that now is around about 12 inches, 30 centimetres. The fish won't have to pick it up and move too far before I get the indication on the quiver tip. Little, little tips like that definitely put more fish in your net. One question I get asked quite a bit is, is what, what quiver tip to use, what size quiver tip? Today I'm using a one ounce quiver tip, a one ounce carbon tip, it's lovely and fine. I much prefer finer tips, that's a lovely roach that is, I much prefer finer tips because you can see everything that happens like just here. It's not just, not just skimmers, they give you some uh, bites in the winter, some lovely roach to be caught. And I like to see everything, I like to see the tip move on everything, so I can pick out which bites I can pick up on. As well, a lot of these commercial venues don't allow you to use braid. So it does help having a really fine tip in as obviously you're using monofilament, it's got a little bit, it's got more stretch than braid. So I want to compensate that using a finer quiver tip. Best bait today so far, red maggot and a fluorescent pinker. Really, really damp ground bait. And now it's just starting to put a few little bits and bobs in, odd pinky, odd caster. Pinky come off there. I think the fish are on the feed now. So let's get back in. Lovely bite that was. Getting some really positive bites now. Looks like shortening the, the hook length has definitely worked. It seems like this, this shorter line is coming alive, it's really coming into itself now. Just added a little bit more food into the feeder. And this is the best fish from that line so far. It's a lovely roach. That's an absolute beauty, that is. I don't think there's many things better than a nice winter a nice winter redfin, look at the size of that. An absolute clonking roach. Let's put that in the net, see if we can get a few more. Come to the end of the session, the night's drawing in and it's absolutely freezing. But we've had a brilliant day's fishing. We've had some, some nice little skimmers and bream up to three pound and two clonking roach. So it just goes to show what you can catch with the simple feeder approach in these hard winter days. Hopefully the tips I've passed on will help you put more fish in the net like this. <laughs> <laughs>